Jonathan Evans. And I'm Ashley Thompson. This is DOA News. Reporting by remote, I'm David Burke. German voters go to the polls Sunday in parliamentary elections that will help choose the successor to Angela Merkel, who's been in power for 16 years. We get more from AP's Karen Chamas. Merkel's party is scrambling to beat its centre-left rivals, as recent polls suggest a tight race to the finish. Merkel's centre union bloc is expected to trail slightly behind the Social Democrats, with the Green Party eyeing at least a share of the power. About 60.4 million people are eligible to go to the polls and elect the new parliament, who will in turn elect a head of government. I'm Karen Chamas. Former Canadian diplomat Michael Kovrig has reunited with his wife and sister at a Toronto airport after being freed from more than 1,000 days in jail in an exchange deal that freed him and another Canadian, Michael Spaver, after Canada freed Huawei company executive Meng Wanzhou late Friday. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau greeted Spaver and Kovrig at Calgary's airport early Saturday. The two Canadians were released and left China shortly after Huawei Chief Financial Officer Meng Wanzhou flew out of Canada Friday after reaching an agreement with U.S. prosecutors ending her extradition hearing. Meng arrived in China on Saturday. She waved to supporters at the airport in Shenzhen, her hometown. A crowd of well-wishers chanted patriotic slogans and held aloft red banners to welcome her return. Meng was arrested in December of 2018 in Vancouver after a New York court issued an arrest warrant saying she had tried to cover up attempts by Huawei-linked companies to sell equipment to Iran in breach of U.S. sanctions. For more on these stories and the rest of the day's news, visit our website. This is VOA News. Russia's foreign minister said Saturday the United States, China, Russia and Pakistan are working together to ensure that Afghanistan's new Taliban rulers keep their promises, especially to form a genuinely representative government and prevent the spread of extremist groups. Sergei Lavrov said representatives from Russia, China and Pakistan had traveled to Qatar and then to Afghanistan's capital, Kabul, to engage both the Taliban and former Afghan President Hamid Karzai and Abdullah Abdullah, who headed the ousted government's negotiating council with the Taliban. Lavrov said the interim government announced by the Taliban does not reflect the whole gamut of Afghan society ethno-religious and political forces, so we are engaging in contacts. They are ongoing. The Russian foreign minister was speaking at a press conference before addressing the UN General Assembly's high-level meeting. The Taliban have hanged a dead body in the main square of a western city in Afghanistan, signaling a return to some of the group's harsh methods of the past. AP's Ben Thomas reports. The crowd gathered to see the gruesome display, shouting their approval. A man who runs a nearby pharmacy tells the Associated Press four bodies were brought to Herat City's main square. One dangled from a crane, while three were moved to other areas for public display. He says the Taliban announced the four were caught taking part in a kidnapping and killed by police. This Taliban commander says the display should alert criminals that they are not safe. One of the Taliban's founders told the AP earlier this week the Taliban will again carry out harsh punishments, including executions and amputations, as it reasserts its rule over Afghanistan. I'm Ben Thomas. Amid an outcry over U.S. treatment of Haitian asylum seekers, the country's embattled prime minister said Saturday that inequalities and conflict drive migration. We get more from AP's Julie Walker. In a recorded speech to the United Nations General Assembly through a translator, Ariel Henry says the situation at the U.S. border is a reminder that people are always going to flee poverty and conflicts for a better life. Migration will continue as long as our planet has both wealthy areas, whilst most of the population, of the world's population indeed, lives in he also brought up the photos of border agents in Texas on horses, images of the way many of my compatriots have been handled at the border between Mexico and the United States have shocked many people. Julie Walker, New York. Reporting by remote, I'm David Bird, VOA.